earlier this year you were in favor of the 10 cent increase to the gas tax, but you no longer support that. Uh, I'd like to ask well, what changed your mind? Well, I recognize there's a need for additional money for the road fund. And what I said was that I was willing to consider increasing the motor fuel user fees uh, to address that once we got the property tax resolved. What happened, if you recall this year, uh, first of all, with the high price of gasoline, gasoline taxes are very unpopular. The Moines Register poll shows two to one against it. Uh, secondly, uh, with right at the end of the session, about the time we got the property tax resolved, uh, they closed down a couple of refineries and the cost of gasoline spiked up to uh, nearly $4 a gallon in Iowa. In Chicago, it was about five. I went to a wedding in Minnesota, it was four and a quarter. Uh, so it's very unpopular. So, and, the, and, the, and frankly, the legislature couldn't get the votes before they adjourned to get it done this year. So what I suggested after the session, that's, let's uh, look at some other alternatives. Uh, the other thing is, you, you know, the federal government is uh, mandating much more fuel-efficient vehicles in the future, which means we're going to see uh, less money coming in from gasoline as you have more fuel-efficient vehicles. Also, many consumers are, are, because of the high cost of gasoline, are going to hybrid vehicles mm -hmm. or electric vehicles or trucks now converting to natural gas is cheaper than, and all of these things are going to reduce the revenue. So. The gas tax is going to be a declining source of revenue in future years. The road use tax fund, which is protected by the Iowa Constitution, can get revenue from three different sources. Vehicle registration, which is what you pay for your license for your car and truck. And, and that fee is based on a combination of value and weight. Right. Uh, and then the, and the other source is the use tax when you purchase a vehicle, a car or a truck. And the last time they increased that, uh, they left that at 5%, whereas the sales tax on everything else is at six. Yeah. So what I've asked Paul Trombino to do is look at other sources that could provide the additional revenue we need in the road use tax fund, which is distributed to the DOT, the cities and the counties. Yeah other than a gas tax, because the gas tax seems to be very unpopular, and they've not been able to get the votes to pass it in the last four or five years of the legislature. Okay. So do you think it's gone for good, or do you see it coming no. back up as an uh, issue during uh, your governorship? No, I, I hope I can even find a proposal to recommend next year, but I think it would not be just a strict increase in the gas tax by 10 cents a gallon, but rather another alternative that would provide the needed funding that we need for the road use tax fund. And one that I think hopefully could be more palatable to the citizens who are struggling with the cost of gasoline commuting to work. So I think it's important to be sensitive to that. Unlike my predecessor who threatened to veto any increase in the gas tax, I have never done that. But we have not been able to get the votes in the legislature to do it. And I think an increase of 10 cents uh, to a lot of people is just uh, something that they, they don't want because they already are paying too much for gasoline right now. Okay. Now, we have seen some reduction in gasoline prices uh, in the last, since the legislature went home. Right. But I also watch what's happening with the price of a barrel of oil, mm -hmm. and that's now approaching $100 a barrel again. So we're going to probably see gas prices go back up. Uh, okay. And, and, and so I think we're going to have to look at other alternatives and something that would be maybe more likely. The benefit of the use tax on trucks and cars is the cost of trucks and cars goes up. Mm -hmm. The revenue from that goes up. Whereas the gasoline tax is so much a gallon, it doesn't go up. The last time the gasoline tax was raised? 1989. And you know what the price of gas was in 1989? A little bit less. It was not only a little bit less, it was like a dollar. Yeah. Thirty dollar forty something like that, yeah. and so now it's three forty, yeah. you know, something like that. So what I wanted to ask you is, as you said, you directed Paul Trombino to uh, look for alternative funding sources yeah. for the DOT. Um, can you tell me the timetable of uh, when he's supposed to be, decide those sources? 
My hope is that he could come back with some recommendations that we can consider before the next session of the legislature in January. Okay. So it's, uh, I know it's never, but I think the last time we passed it was 1988. It didn't take effect to 89. We passed it in an election year. So I don't think this is something that, uh, I, I mean, I'm, my hope is he can come up with a plan that we can generate bipartisan support for that can be approved in the 2014 session. Okay. Um, are there any funding sources currently that you see as likely options or that you are in favor of? Well, I mentioned one, and that is the use tax and the fact that w when the sales tax was raised for everything else, they didn't do it on vehicles. Yeah. Now, it's considered a use tax rather than a sales tax, but and the money is protected and goes into the road use tax fund. But the benefit of that is that it does, when the cost of vehicles goes up, the revenue from that goes up. And, and, and the gas tax is not, not that way because it's just so much a gallon and, is, and frankly it's going down because as the federal government is uh, mandating more fuel efficient vehicles and as people are buying vehicles that are going to get more mileage, the revenue from gas tax is going to continue to decline. Mm -hmm. So aside from the use tax, is there anything else that you are... Well, another at? thing, we used to earmark, back before 1975, a portion of the sales tax. Right. And if you follow the general fund of the state, the general fund is in a very strong position. Right. Also, we didn't used to have the Rebuild Iowa Infrastructure Fund. And now and a lot of the revenue to the Rebuild Iowa Infrastructure Fund comes from uh, gambling revenue. And that has been a growing source of revenue, whereas the gas tax is a kind of a declining source of revenue in the future. So those are some other options. There okay. may be others, uh, and that's why, I've, and Paul is a very creative and um, problem-solving type of individual, and that's why I've asked him, think outside the box, let's try to come up with something, and maybe something that uh, we won't have to be constantly increase in future years because it's a declining source of revenue like the gas tax, but something that might at least keep up with inflation. So even though the gas tax is uh, a declining source of revenue, it still represents a significant uh, amount of money if it was increased. Is that not worth pursuing? Um, even well, in when, when the public options? is against it two to one, and, and the legislature hasn't been able to pass it for four years, what I'm doing is acknowledging reality, and that is, it's very difficult to get people in the legislature or up for election to vote some, for something that their constituents are opposed to because they are elected to represent their constituents. And when you have a vast majority of your constituents, uh, many of whom are struggling because of the financial circumstances, opposed to it, it's, it's a difficult thing to get. Okay. Um. So some other states like Virginia have begun uh, charging an increased fee for hybrids and electric vehicles to um, try to help offset the cost of... That's, that's a possibility to look at. So is that something you're considering at this time? Well, I think that those are... Well, I think we're recognizing the reality of the type of vehicles that are they're going to be on the roads in the future. It makes sense. It needs to be fair. Uh, and and none, none of these things will be easy, but... Uh, yeah, if that's what Virginia is doing, I think it's certainly something to look at. And I think we're going to have, and, and also this diesel, uh, if we're going to see a big transfer from diesel fuel to natural gas, we want to make sure that people that are running their trucks on natural gas are paying their share. The, the whole idea of the road use tax fund is to have the people that get the benefits of the roads, whether they live in Iowa or not, to pay the cost of, of the roads and bridges, to pay the cost of maintaining them. Okay, and so the needs of the DOT for infrastructure repairs are pretty urgent. Um, the American Society of Civil Engineers has ranked 46% of Iowa's roads at poor or mediocre condition. Um, roads or bridges? Roads. Okay, um, bridges. About 20% of bridges are, um, uh, are deficient. Are deficient, yeah. So what I'm asking is, is there any, are there any plans to um, ramp up repairs to that, and are there any well, funds to do in, that? If you look at recent years, we have actually increased the amount of funding significantly. In fact, one of the first things I asked Paul Trevino to do when he came 
is to identify ways that we could do, reduce administrative costs and have that money go instead yeah. for roads. And it, he has been able to identify about $40 million on an annual basis that has been redirected towards improvements. He's also um, changed their priority setting system uh, to be, I think, better and more efficient in terms of addressing these issues. Now, that doesn't solve the whole problem, but in recent years also, because of the great job that we did in rebuilding after the flood of 2011 along the Missouri River, we were able, and, and FEMA rules required that it had to be rebuilt within six months of the flood in order to get full federal reimbursement. Only that was an unusual flood because the water, this was done because of the release of water by the Corps of Engineers from the dams on the Missouri River, and the flood started in June, it didn't end till September. But our six months didn't start when the water went down in September, it started in June. Okay. So, so we had basically about two months and to rebuild all those roads and bridges. Now the phenomenal thing is we did, if you ever saw the pictures, Interstate 680 was just annihilated uh, going into the north of Omaha in, in 34 days. Well, first of all, we had this flood that lasts from June to mid-September. Then we had 34 days without rain. The DOT uh, put together a strategy with several contractors, and they worked day and night, and they rebuilt the road in 34 days. And I and the lieutenant governor went to the dedication ceremony of that on December 2nd, and it snowed. So <laughs> kind of an unusual thing. But not, they not only did 680, but they rebuilt all the other roads and ridges and the federal government did come through and 100% reimburse us. So as a result of that and the other savings, we had the biggest road building project, I think, spending we've ever had last year. Well, despite that, uh, Paul Trombino says that the department is still about 215 million short of meeting critical needs. For the future, I understand right. that. And that's the reason why I think we need to look at all the options and alternatives and how to come up with that and not just say, well, we're going to try to get the 10% increase in the gas tax next year because they've been trying to do that for several years and haven't been able to get it done. So I think we're going to have to come up with a new approach, a new strategy. I do recognize there is a shortfall, $215 million or something in that category. I'm not disputing that. It's just that how do we come up with it and what's the fairest way and something that can gain the support of more people. Right. Um, do you see uh, a plan coming forward with a, what chances of success do you have, see that having in the 2014 session? Well, it's got to be an uphill battle considering the fact that nothing, nothing's passed since 1988. But uh, I'm, so was the battle to get property tax relief and education reform and to get our health and wellness plan approved this year. Those were all big and difficult issues. Uh, I think that with the right kind of uh, approach uh, that the public can see uh, is, is, is fair and that is not as unpopular as just raising the gas tax, I think there might be a possibility to get it done next year. It won't be easy and it's going to take bipartisan cooperation because we have a split legislature and it's an election year and, and, I, and, and a lot of people are afraid uh, to vote for any tax increase in a in an election year. But if it's a user fee, that the people that are gonna get the benefits of it are the ones that are gonna pay for it, I think it could be more attractive. So that's the reason why I always think it should be focused on user fees, not tax increases. Okay, uh, thank you.